Breaking news! It happened, and it caught some by surprise. After Friday's matchup, the Falcons ended up making some changes. Let's get into the details of what happened here. But before we dive into today's big news, go ahead and hit that like button so you don't miss any updates. We have some important developments to talk about after our week in Miami, and you'll want to stay informed as we get closer to the new season. So let's get right to it. The Atlanta Falcons made a number of roster moves after our joint practices and preseason game with the Miami Dolphins. And unfortunately, we have some tough injury news. Outside linebacker Brawlin Trice and cornerback Harrison Hand have been placed on the reserve slash injured list. That means we won't see them on the field for the rest of the 2024 season. Now, let's break down what this means for the team. Brawlin Trice, our third round pick, was showing a lot of promise during training camp, earning reps with both the first and second team defenses. He was listed as the backup outside linebacker behind Arnold Ebiketti on our first official depth chart. But during Friday's preseason game, Trice sustained a knee injury while rushing the passer. It was a tough moment as he had to be assisted off the field by our athletic trainers. For a rookie with so much potential, it's a huge blow, not just for him, but for the entire defense. As for Harrison Hand, he went down during practice last Wednesday during 11-on-11 drills. The injury occurred on a deep pass play down the right sideline, and it was clear something wasn't right as Hand was slow to get up. Although he managed to limp off on his own, the knee injury will keep him out for the season as well. Hand was a recent addition to our roster signing with us in June, and he was competing for a spot as our third cornerback behind Mike Hughes and Clark Phillips three. Losing both Trice and Hand is a setback, especially as we're trying to build a strong defense under new leadership. But that's not all the news we've got for you. The Falcons also made some other moves to adjust the roster. First, quarterback Nathan Rourke was released. Rourke, who joined us on August 1st, got his first taste of NFL action in Friday's game, coming in during the fourth quarter. While he showed some mobility with a couple of scrambles, including a 21-yard run that was our longest of the game, his passing performance was less impressive, completing only three of his 13 attempts for 37 yards. It seems like the coaching staff decided to go in a different direction after his debut, but it's not all departures. The Falcons have also signed three new players to bolster the roster, wide receiver Jakeem Grant, running back Spencer Brown, and quarterback John Paddock. Let's talk about Jakeem Grant first. This guy is no stranger to the NFL, having been in the league for six years now. He was drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 2016 and has since played in 81 games across two teams. Although injuries have kept him off the field since 2021, when he was healthy, Grant was a dynamic presence on both offense and special teams. With 100 receptions for 1,140 yards and 7 touchdowns, plus 6 combined return touchdowns, he's a versatile player who can make an impact in multiple phases of the game. Grant's experience and playmaking ability will be crucial, especially after we placed wide receiver Rondale Moore on the reserve slash injured list last week. Grant's ability to contribute both as a receiver and a returner gives us more options as we continue to shape the roster for the regular season. Next up is running back Spencer. Spencer Brown. Brown's career has been a bit of a roller coaster since he entered the league as an undrafted free agent in 2021. He appeared in six games with the Carolina Panthers over two seasons, recording nine carries for 43 yards. While those numbers might not jump off the page, Brown brings some depth to our running back room, which could be important as we look to keep our starters fresh throughout the season. Finally, we've got quarterback John Paddock back in the fold. Paddock, an undrafted free agent, returns to Atlanta after being released on August 1st. With Rourke gone, Paddock will have another opportunity to compete for a spot on the roster, likely as a developmental player who can learn behind our established quarterbacks. So, Falcons fans, what do you think of these changes? It's always tough to see players go down with injuries, especially young guys like Trice and Hand who were showing so much potential. But that's part of the game. And now it's about seeing how the rest of the roster stacks up. Are you excited about the addition of Jakeem Grant and what he can bring to the team? Do you think Spencer Brown or John Paddock will make an impact this season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's talk about Friday night. Our Atlanta Falcons took to the field against the Miami Dolphins, and while the 20-13 loss might not have been what we hoped for, there were still some bright spots worth talking about. Let's kick things off with the debut of our 2024 eighth overall draft pick. Michael Penix Jr., we were all eager to see what he could bring to the table, and let me tell you, he didn't disappoint. Penix showed poise and precision, 
completing 9 out of 16 passes for 104 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions, but that 41-yard bomb to Chris Blair was a thing of beauty. Penix said after the game that he wasn't nervous and that the game felt slower compared to practice. Now that's the kind of confidence you want to see from your rookie quarterback. But it wasn't just Penix making waves. Let's talk about Carlos Washington Jr., who might just be the diamond in the rough we've been looking for at the running back position. Last season, Washington was an undrafted free agent stuck on the practice squad, but this year he's been turning heads in training camp, and Friday night was no exception. Despite our offensive line struggling to create much space, Washington punched in our only touchdown of the game after the defense set us up on Miami's 17-yard line. It wasn't flashy, but it was gritty, and that's exactly what you want to see from a guy fighting for a roster spot. Now, if you were watching closely, you might have noticed rookie wide receiver Casey Washington. His night as a receiver was a bit quiet, with just three catches on nine targets, but don't let that fool you. Casey was making plays on special teams, showing off his versatility and proving that he's more than just a one-trick pony. When asked what he couldn't do after the game, Casey joked that offense, special teams, and even defense were all fair game. Love that attitude. And speaking of special teams, how about D'Angelo Malone? This third-year linebacker was all over the place on returns, making two crucial tackles and making his case for the final 53-man roster. But let's be real, not everything went smoothly. Taylor Heineke had a rough night, and if anyone was still questioning why we drafted a quarterback in 2024, Friday night answered that question. Heineke went 4 for 11, managing just 11 yards. Yikes! Combine that with a costly turnover, and it's easy to see why his days might be numbered. The Falcons have already restructured his deal to save some cap space, but after Friday's performance, you have to wonder how much longer he'll be sticking around. And then there's the pass rush, or rather, the lack thereof. We couldn't bring down either of Miami's quarterbacks on 33 dropbacks. That's right, zero sacks. Nada. Zilch. Injuries to Brawlin Trice and DeMarco Helms didn't help, but somebody needs to step up. If this doesn't get addressed, we're going to have some serious issues come the regular season. The offensive line wasn't much better, struggling to generate any push in the running game. And let's not forget the miscues on special teams. Those bobbles on returns could have cost us big. We've got some work to do this week, no doubt about it. Now, Circling back to Carlos Washington Jr., it's clear that this guy is trusting himself more this year. He's got a different mindset compared to last season, where he felt like he left some meat on the bone. Now, he's focused, he's confident, and he's ready to leave it all out on the field. Falcons running backs coach Michael Petra has been in his ear telling him to relax and just play football, and it looks like Washington is finally taking that advice to heart. Washington has been getting a good amount of reps with both the first and second team offense, and it was no surprise to see him leading the charge against the Dolphins. He had 16 carries for 25 yards, including that one-yard push for a touchdown. Sure, he's a bit hard on himself, saying he could have done better, but that's what you want, a guy who's never satisfied, always pushing for more. With two preseason games left, against the Ravens on August 17th and the Jaguars on August 23rd, Washington has two more opportunities to prove he belongs on that 53-man roster. Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algeyer are locked in as our top two backs, but Washington's got a shot to carve out a role. Head coach Raheem Morris even mentioned how Carlos brings some Bijan-like qualities to the table, and that's high praise. It's all about finding the right fit, and if Washington keeps showing out, he just might secure his spot. So, Falcons fans, what do you think? Is Carlos Washington Jr. the real deal? Will Michael Penix Jr. keep improving? And what about that pass rush? Do we need to hit the panic button? Or will someone step up? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already. Your support means everything. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the latest Falcons news and analysis. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Go Falcons!